Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello, is that a new gate? Look at that, it is. So, as we wind our way to work through the serried rows of the corn, I was going to do a, a thing on just some comments on the YouTube channel because we're coming up to 500 videos. We're not there yet, we're, we're, we're way away. We're about 440 something, but I wouldn't have said I'd done 100 videos, let alone 440. But uh, what, uh, let me tell you a bit about the sort of feedback that you get from this channel. Now, no, I'm not saying I don't want feedback, and I'm not saying I don't read feedback, but basically, all I'm saying is, I don't need feedback, <laughs> okay? Uh, oh dear. So one of the feedback uh, parameters I've had a look at is um, the number of people that watch the video. And to be honest with you, apart from reading your comment, that is about all I look at. Now it's not because I'm chasing views, I mean, God knows. <laughs> I get, I would say on average, my videos get about 30 views. I'm amazed YouTube even hosts them. I, I honestly, for 400 videos that have got 30 views each, I can only assume, like most venture capitalists, they're hoping that I'm gonna get famous, in which case they'll be able to monetize my content. But, now I, I am obviously going to get famous, but probably centuries after my death. So, you know, when artificial intelligence has got clever enough to go through all my output in its various forms and and stitch it all together and conclude that I was a, uh, what's the word, uh, a polyglot uh, genius, self-taught, autodidact. But, you know, that's, that's a few centuries off yet. So let's not worry about that. So let's just say I'm not chasing YouTube views, okay? However, for some reason, some of my videos get more views than others and I had one recently the, the Code 10 fraud uh, video which is I think it's getting about 20, 2,800 videos uh, 200 uh, views 2,800 views which if you're American that's 2,800 views why why I mean I mean I can, it was a good video and if you haven't watched it, which is unlikely, probably, then I do urge you to go and watch it because it was a, a pretty heartfelt discussion of, you know, what's shaped me as a consumer. Uh, but I put it about 2,800 views. I mean, come on. I need people say that they get more uh, views if the YouTube algorithm picks up their video for some reason. I don't know what it would have picked up. Perhaps Code 10 is something, or Fraud is something, or maybe it's just slightly more humorous than the rest of my videos. And it's got no, almost no dental content. That probably helped it. But, but 2,800. I mean, previously my record was about 300. And I thought I'd never top that. And that was a video on um, how to convert one old defunct file archive file format, scan file format, into a, the more modern PDF file format. I used to use a scanner called Paperpot, Paperport, and it outputted all its files in a file format called .max, .max, and it's a, it's a proprietary format. So, a bit like the old um, early video files, the, the uh, real player, rm, rm, .rm. You can't watch those anymore because they, you know, they're just nobody um, supports that format anymore, and nobody's allowed to make an open source converter because it's proprietary and it's not. It's still in copyright, so uh, you're not allowed to reverse engineer it um, because otherwise you'll get uh, branded as a hacker, and you get a hacker, you get a lengthy jail sentence in America. So even if you're not American, because they'll argue that you've made the tool available to Americans and therefore uh, you're subject to the laws of the United States. 
which is incidentally is actually a concern not a major concern but a concern for dentists in the UK because if you get a patient who's an American citizen even if they're joint American and English then uh, that American citizen can sue you in the United States for anything you do in the UK uh, and you will be extradited if it's you know serious enough uh, the British government will hand you over to the Americans to stand trial for not complying with the laws of dentistry in Kentucky or New York or wherever they decide to sue you so bear that in mind when taking on American patients American patients are a bit of a ticking time bomb the Americans are uh, this uh, this concept of American exceptionalism which means that basically they can do what the F they like and the law you know the world what's reasonable and doesn't apply to them and so for example if you're an American then uh, you have to pay and you've got income from abroad you have to pay income you have to pay tax on it abroad and then the Americans will also say that you have to pay tax on it in the United States as well so you end up paying tax twice this was designed originally to um, stop people fleeing to the um, to Canada to escape the draft anyway I digress so now now I'm not saying that I don't like having you know I don't like having 30 eyeballs on I don't know who you are you look dodgy to me but you know I can't stop you watching as my nurses say I said why would 2,800 people want to watch that video? And my nurses are like, you don't know, you don't know who they are. It's like on Facebook, someone's, you know, someone's followed you, they've got some funny name. You don't know them and you can't find out easily who they are. They, you know, the girl said to me, you can't stop people following you on Facebook. Well, I suppose you can ban them, but the point is that how do you know, you know, you can't spend all your life banning everybody from following your Facebook. Oh, it's all very confusing and very unsatisfactory. So anyway, I've had 2,800 sets of eyeballs on this video. But I don't get any money, right? I'm sure you've noticed that when you watch my videos, you don't see any adverts. I don't monetize my videos, not that I ever could and not that I would ever want to. So really, you you can be safe knowing that there's going to be no uh, no uh, commercial break jarring as they are on YouTube I mean good god uh, what else so uh, as far as the comments go I got a I was talking about VAT on uh, uh, on schools on, on public and private schools in the UK and sort of so I'm trying to work out in my own mind at the same time as I was talking whether that was likely to extend to private health care because we've got let's let's just be honest we've got a Labour government in now we are going to have five years of chaos five years of God knows what is going to happen like we haven't even had the first budget yet so goodness knows what they're going to do they've already nationalised the railways they're basically just going to take possession of them after the lease has run out or before if they can find some sort of deficiency in the lease. Um, they've already nationalised the power grid. They're going to have a British power national power company. They have done a pension grab, although they don't, uh, they haven't said that in so many words, but that's exactly what it is. And that, that will, that will, you know, well, bear in mind they've only been in Parliament two weeks, so they've said a lot of what they'd like to achieve, but not much about how they're going to do it. And I think the detail of how they're going to do it is going to come out in the next uh, few weeks and months. So the, the, the pension grab, the way that works is that the government, you know, having taxed everything, having taxed uh, your moving house, for example, why they should tax you for moving house, I don't know. Uh, they tax you for uh, spending money, 20% on any, everything you spend, you have to send off to the Chancellor. They tax sugar, 
content in food because you know again they're just searching around they're desperate 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 for new things to tax that would like not appear unreasonable most of the cost of the fuel that you buy is tax uh, they're taxing uh, uh, well you know I don't need to tell you this they tax everything don't they they would tax the oxygen that you breathe if they could if they thought they could on the public into thinking that the government produced it. So, once they've run out of things to tax, right, and they've still got a situation where, hello. Oh. I wonder if it's open in the morning, that Kentucky Fried. I don't think it is. It's a funny Kentucky Fried Chicken, that. For months they didn't take credit cards. And then they couldn't get the orders right. You drive away and find out that, you know, they're giving you the wrong stuff. And then I would say they would pick up quite a lot of work if they opened early and did breakfast. But no. So the government's still got this uh, problem in that the, the tax income is not equal in this expenditure, okay? So they don't do what you or I would do, which is uh, rain back on the expenditure. What they do is they then, they write a bunch of IOUs. Uh, and it's funny, I, I met a bloke at Headcorn Airdrome the other day and gave him the full Bitcoin thing. But he, he seemed to be genuinely interested only because he never met anyone who could really explain it to him properly. It's very difficult to explain Bitcoin to someone in 20 minutes because it's, it's such so broad a subject and so deep a subject that you really don't know. You can't give anyone more than a brief overview of everything. So, <clears throat> and I explained to him how money was created that the government writes IOUs and then they're not technically law allowed to sell them straight to the Bank of England so they sell them to the correspondent banks or the whole transaction goes through a layer of banks just to make it legal and then they uh, Bank of England puts the IOU in the vault and then authorizes the Treasury to print the money which the government then spends they press on new money new bank money anyway new Bank of England money new government spending money, right? so So, uh, and that's how they, uh, that's how they balance the, uh, well, they don't even balance it like that, but I mean, that's how they, they try and close the gap a bit. I got this comment saying, uh, talking about VAT on, on, on dentistry, saying that, you know, that uh, there's no reason why there shouldn't be VAT on dentistry because it's not a, a need. It's just a want. It's just a cosmetic thing that's, that basically they, this person had got it into their head the idea that everything that was necessary was was, and was being done and, and could be done on the health service and cosmetic dentistry was basically the froth on the top you know just the the uh, the, the, the veneers that don't need to be done or the uh, I mean there's not much cosmetic dentistry honestly now that it is done uh, most of it you know other than possibly uh, uh, the, the, the aligning services, the Invisalign, the smile line, that sort of thing. So, he said basically, why don't dentists just take a cut in their pay, private dentists? And this is the sort of the attitude that you've got in the private school sector. They were saying, well, we're going to put 20% on the private school fees. Uh, and where where are you going to find it? You know, and the schools are like, well, we're not, we're not going to find it. You can't just magic 20% out of nowhere. Um, someone's going to have to pay for it. And that'll be the, uh, the parents who will, will they'll have to put the school fees up. And then um, the parents also, because they're going to have to reduce the level of service. And uh, the state school's going to have to pay because a certain number of pupils will be pulled out of private schools and put into state schools who are then going to have to find £7,000 a year extra to, um, to give them a, a, a bad education. Or a worse one, anyway. 
we got this very much with the um, in the 1990 contract negotiations where you know they were like uh, we were complaining that uh, the fees weren't sufficient to do decent quality work and that everybody said well why don't you take a pay cut you know we all know dentists are overpaid uh, of, of you know earn a lot of money therefore easy solution you know just just you earn less and we get to keep the service <laughs> and I was like okay it's not quite as easy as that you know what I mean the, the problem with that is that when if you're running a service a publicly funded service you you have to you have all the costs you have the establishment costs of the buildings you have the materials and sundry costs and you have the staff costs okay so and you can't say well uh, I'm going to save money by cutting the fees and and just take it all out of the staff costs uh, you'll have no staff. Duh, duh, look around you, no staff, duh. So, that was, and now he was quite a, um, an irritating sort of bloke because he was trying to draw, he was trying to say that NHS dentistry was moral and private dentistry was immoral, in that there was no justification for it. And, uh, and therefore, uh, there's no, shouldn't be exempt from that. And uh, it's like I said yesterday, it's very difficult to argue with these people. They're not that right. So you can't, you can't argue the, the finer nuance of all the stuff that is necessary to understand to arrive at some sort of credible model that works in the real world. Oh, well done. There you go. Down that way. Look at me. Oh, what are they doing there now? Oh, God. More houses. Mind you, I don't mind. So, anyway, I don't know why that video got picked up. And, you know, I mean, I've had a few, I've had a few comments, but to be honest with you, they're not. I mean, I'm really after intelligent comments from dentists who are sort of, yeah, yeah, Derek, you know, you're right about that, but you're not right about that, blah, 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 in my surgery, etc., etc. et cetera. Um, I'm not really after patients saying, do you know what, all the problems of the world could be sorted out if, if a dentist earned the same as a dustman. They don't understand that, you know, to set this surgery up, I've had to invest a lot of money uh, slightly more than a dust car so uh, and and this is not you know these are these are the worker bees in fact I'm not even thinking they're the worker bees to be honest I think the worker bees are the underneath the queen aren't they? they these are the ones below the worker bees okay they, are they the drones no they're the ones that fan the hive I don't know who they are I don't care I'm going to turn comments off if they don't stop making stupid comments I'll turn them off I don't mind having the occasional argument. All right. So, I'm work already. Can't believe it. This makes the time fly. Nice to talk to you. See you soon. Bye.